So I read that particular preface in the book as well. Your story about starting in this new company and you thought that you will learn a lot of things about software and the business logic, which apparently was not emphasized. And actually, DDD actually emphasized this importance of business logic or domain in this particular sense. Why do you think domain is still the key thing in software? Because these days, a lot of technologies, right? So there are plenty, abundant frameworks, programming language, cloud, whatever that is. Why do you think business logic is still the key in this modern era? Yeah, so business logic is heart of software for a reason. It's the reason software is being built. You're not building software to demonstrate how fast and scalable your database is or how sexy your user interface is. You're building a software for solving a particular business problem. This problem can be making someone more efficient, streamlining business processes. Nowadays, many businesses are built on software. That's their business domain. So that's where business logic steps in. If you've got everything right, except for business logic, you will get technology demo for a computer game. It looks nice, but you're looking at it for a few minutes and then you get bored because it's meaningless. <laughs> So you also mentioned in the book that actually DDD brings not just software developers as the important actors in the software development lifecycle, but actually also the business domain experts. Tell us more about this. Why business domain experts should be involved in the overall software development lifecycle? Yeah, so that's actually the biggest lie of software engineering. And it's to be a software engineer, you have to write code. And I am an introvert to the bone. After some time, I realized, hey, we're not writing code for the sake of writing code. We're writing code to solve a problem for someone. This someone, they are domain experts. They are people who have the most knowledge about the business domain that we are modeling and implementing in code. So in order to efficiently solve that problem, we have to communicate with them, to talk with them. We have to be effective in that communication and collaboration with people. <laughs> So software engineering is not only about code. That's why interactions with domain experts play a key role in implementing software. You have to make sure that you understand the problem you're solving. That's critical. You cannot provide a software solution without understanding the problem first. Either it's going to be a wrong solution or it's going to be a right solution, but for a different problem. And both are useless. Yep. And there's a critical point in the book that you mentioned as well. If you fail to understand the business problem or maybe the problem per se, the user problems or the customer problems, you will eventually write a suboptimal solution, even though your technology might be advanced, the most advanced in the current era, but your software is always suboptimal. What do you mean by this? Can technology actually solve how your software is being written? Why it's always be suboptimal? Yeah. So if we take this name of this methodology, domain driven design, I prefer to expand it a bit and say business domain driven software design. So we have three components here. First of all, we have business domain that we have to grasp. We have to understand. Second, we have software design. That's what we are building here. And we have that word driven in the middle, which means in mathematical language, it's like software design equals function of business domain. So if you don't get that business domain right, then you'll get the wrong software design. First of all, it is going to affect the logic of your code. As I said, you may be solving the wrong problem or you may be trying to solve the correct problem, but in an inefficient ways. Second, as the management design guides us, there are quite a few design decisions that we're basing upon that knowledge of business domains. So that's strategic design decisions, like what are the coarse grain components that we're going to use to implement our system? How are they going to communicate with each other? how we allocate that work to software engineering teams. And we have technical design decisions, like what design patterns we're going to use to implement each component, how we're going to implement its business logic, how we're going to orchestrate the interactions of different parts of a component. It's our internal architecture. And of course, we have high-level architecture, how components are working with each other. And that also has implications both on strategic and technical level. Now, if we get that business domain knowledge wrong, that's a good opportunity to make some wrong decisions, both strategic and tactical ones. So that's, in my opinion, why we have to make sure that we have enough knowledge of the problem domain before we're even trying to design a solution for it. 
And sometimes what I can see as well, software developers, I mean, we are all clever people, right? We also sometimes think of imaginary problems or imaginary solutions. We think that, oh, it will be cool if the most typical one is something happens in atomic fashion. So everything is just one transaction. It will be real time, cool, and people will just see the result as soon as possible. But sometimes business process doesn't work this way. It's okay to have some delay. And that's why we have more event driven architecture, asynchronous and things like that. And this leads to a lot of things that we know software projects tend to fail. Traditionally, we all learn about that. Maybe 50% or more of software projects are failing. Do you think by domain-driven design, this crisis can actually be solved? Yeah, I actually believe that. <laughs> so if we look for reasons why so many software projects fail, if you look at studies that were conducted on this topic, you'll see that quite a few of them, if not all of them, fail because of communication issues or something related to communication. It can be communication between team members, communication between software engineers and domain experts, communication issues between management and engineering teams. The core principle of domain-driven design is building a shared understanding between the different stakeholders of the project so that they can speak and reason about that software system in the same language. In DDD lingo, it's called ubiquitous language. Once we will be able to facilitate communication in the same language without the need for multiple translations before a knowledge reaches its destination, everything will be way more efficient. That can solve us lots of rework, lots of wrong assumptions, and eventually, I believe it will lead to more successful software projects. And it probably also could help in translating the changes in the business as well. So let's say these days, everything gets disrupted easily. If you really understand the business domain and use the same understanding, the shared understanding, like what you mentioned, the ubiquitous language and maybe the business process, maybe you can also adapt your software easily. You can use the same terms, same understanding, even your software, the code, the classes, maybe the objects are named similarly. So you can actually probably adapt to the changes pretty much easier because the business domains, the business understanding and software developers understanding basically are the same. Am I right to say that actually the case, what DDD is trying to solve? Yeah, yeah, that's as well, because everything changes, especially if you are working for a startup. In many cases, the startup is new. Not only that we as software engineers have no idea how to implement that in the most efficient way, but business people have no idea how they're going to solve a certain problem that they are focusing on. They know that, hey, that's something that we want to do. How we're going to do it? We are going to iterate, we are going to test a few solutions until we find the most optimal one. And guess what? <laughs> During that time period, everything is going to change. That understanding of the business domain is going to evolve. Not only you are going to learn more and more about it, but those business people, those domain experts, they're going to learn as well. As they gain more knowledge, that has to be reflected in software design decisions. So going back to that formula of software design equals function of business domain, if that component business domain changes, it has to be reflected in software design. There can be many types of changes, starting from maybe a more efficient way to describe the business domain, a better terminology, a better understanding of the business processes, like what you just said about transaction boundaries, for example, what should be strongly consistent, what can be eventually consistent. But also the whole business domain can change. Now, it's not unusual for a company to start with one business goal and change it along the way because the previous one wasn't financially viable, for example. Software project that was implemented in the first reincarnation of the company is not necessarily relevant for the new one because business domain may change, its subdomains may change, everything can change. It has to be reflected in software design. Failing to react to changes in business domain will occur technical debt over time and eventually it will lead you to a very big technical debt and a big ball of mud. And typically then engineers will say, yeah, we need to rewrite the whole thing again. So starting from scratch, that's like the typical <laughs> uh, problem in the software industry. 